The future has already arrived for the Detroit Red Wings. The team's leading point getter at both positions is a rookie, Lucas Raymond at forward and Lloyd Sider at defense, but there's still plenty more on the way, evidenced by their number two placement in elite prospects prospect pool rankings. Headlining the next wave of Wings potential stars is Simone Edmondson, the number six overall pick last July. When Edmondson steps on the ice, he becomes the hub through which Frolunda's offense flows. He's not just skilled, he's not just involved, he's endlessly confident with the desire to experiment, to try new plays and see what works and what doesn't, and mistakes don't deter him. It's always been a guarantee that when Edmondson steps on the ice, things will happen. Sometimes bad, but increasingly, and now predominantly, good. That's reflected in the numbers. Edvinson's 0.59 points per game sits atop the SHL's all-time under-19 draft plus one scoring leaders for defenders. Among his team, he's playing the third most minutes overall and the most at even strength, while leading the decor in points per game with the third best shot share. So let's find out what allows him to make plays like these. Edvinson, Hugo spelar under ett känner tappade på Edvinson. Let go! Pass till Let go! Rush! Och Armani ska inte ta det! Ja, men helt allvarligt. Det kollar den pass till. Det var Ryan Dash. Klätt på den pass till från Simon Edvinson. Any discussion of Edvinson starts with the tools. Bear with me. His skating posture is near optimal, with his knees pushed over his toes, his hips tilted back and engaged into the stride, and his chest up and back straight. He maintains that depth through crossovers and most turns, which gives him power, fluidity, and agility, even as he still develops his outside edges. His hands are arguably better than his skating, controlling the puck with a top hand that adapts and floats across his body instead of being tied to his hip, and a rolling, heel-centric technique. Combined, they enhance his precision and maneuverability. With that out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. The commonality of most of Edvinson's breakout plays is how he invites pressure. Think of it this way. The more players focused on him, the more space his teammates have up the ice. He slows it down where many players speed up, like here. He sees the incoming four checker, delays and problem solves his way around the next one. Instead of cutting back immediately, he waits for the player to get closer, then cuts back and completes the escape, capped with a clean breakout. Whenever possible, he turns to face the inside, which allows him to manipulate incoming pressure or sneak out the side. It also allows him to recognize options up the ice faster than most players. From this position, most dump the puck out or reverse it. Instead, it's a quarterback-like pass to his wide receiver running the field. As he grows more comfortable, he's making more of these small area passes. See pressure, escape it, pass through the next layer. This one's really slick and creates a runway of space for a clean exit. He regularly looks for these cross ice passes, often set up by moving in the opposite direction of his target. Remember, he's creating space. Look at how the entire opposing team is on Edmonton's side of the ice, leaving his teammate free. Even when pressured, he waits the extra second for his teammate to arrive into the passing lane. And he sets them up with deception, here looking up the strong side to buy time for his far side target to get up the ice. It all comes together with this prime Eric Carlson dish. He turns and sees incoming pressure and still has the presence of mind to drop a shoulder shake, invert the pressure to get it on his back, and then pass this puck through not one, not two, but three defenders. Edvinson's always activating into the play. The activation makes him a facilitator, like here where he recovers his own dumpin, leading to a chance. He activates to gain the zone, and then retreats, allowing his supporting teammate to get the puck with a head of steam into open ice. The activation also makes him an offensive zone time extender through pinches, and he stays low to complete the next play. Sometimes it's simple, others it's a scoring chance and he'll bend the rules with subtle interference to create space for his teammates. It also makes him a scoring threat, and notice how he realizes that he can't outrace this defender, so he peels off and finds new space for the goal. But above all else, the activation makes him a creator. He's a defenseman by position, but a playmaker by trade. This all starts with a give and go. He sees his teammate rushing the net. Instead of passing immediately, he slows down, 
takes the puck from in front of his body into his hip pocket. That little adjustment allows him to beat the defender's stick into the passing lane, and he nearly connects. Combine the rush and point activation, and he creates sequences like these. He reads the handoff, widens his stance to move the defender's stick as he drives the net. After his chance, he gets back and prevents a chance at the other end. He follows it up with a simple pass and then joins the rush, outraces a defender, and sets up a goal. I mean, this setup is exceptional. Look at his eyes. He's looking at the goaltender while setting up the pass, even while it leaves his stick. That deception is the secret ingredient for beating defenders with his hands. Here he cuts away from the boards, but delays for a split second to wait for the defender to commit. As soon as he turns his feet, Edvinson cuts inside, head up, evaluating options. He plays off the threat of the pass or shot, uses a subtle fake to get the defender to commit their feet in one direction, and then goes the opposite. This doesn't work fully, but he plays off the expectation of a D to D pass, fakes it, and then gains the inside. Once there, he plays off the threat of the pass to set up the shot, and he often does the opposite, like with this shot pass from the point to Elmo Soto Bloom. Edvinson isn't a perfect player, of course, he's still learning what works and what doesn't. As a high volume passer, turnovers are inevitable and forgivable provided the idea was sound, but many of them aren't. Most of his passes are to the player around the net, even with better options. There are two sticks in his desired lane here, and a teammate in a dangerous position an open lane away. This target is about to be tied up, and he has a teammate in space just to pass away under a defender's stick. Here, he just needs to go behind the net instead of forcing a pass into a pile, and that would have been his eventual target. As we've seen, he can cut inside before shooting, but too often he settles, and sometimes he fixates on plays. Plays like these are the division from the great to the elite, and he makes the low chance, low reward pass instead of spinning back and hitting one of his open teammates. There are needless pinches, stepping up to intercept a saucer pass is usually a bad idea. His teammates already hear, and he has too much ground to make up. Aggression is positive, but this decision is just baffling. But the great decisions occur more and more, like here where he's taking the aggressive position instead of staying at the point, but then pushes off and intercepts the clearing attempt. Pace has been a long-standing issue in Edvinson's game, partly from his creation-focused mindset and partly from his over-reliance on his inside edges. The initial delay is fine, but he doesn't know when to make a simple play sometimes. And he still gets locked into trying to advance the puck forward instead of using teammates behind him. But I see most of these as more glitches that can be patched, he's already phasing these decisions out. Now defense is where Edvinson's projection gets tricky. Right now it's not great, but I think it probably ends up being more of a strength than a weakness. He can switch fast, like from eliminating the net front pass to preventing the shot. He'll kill plays off the rush and then leave pucks into space for his teammate. He does the same in defensive zone coverage after this solid but awkward tie-up. In simpler defensive situations, he drives plays wide and he's not shy about getting physical. The mobility and length give him some leeway as he can be late to pick up threats. I like how this guy calling for the puck is how Edmondson eventually picks him up. He misses threats around the net and often eventually erases them, and he gets these recovery stops too. But these aren't sustainable long term and highlight his defensive skating limitations. This is just awful. He should step up, angle his feet towards the middle, and then build backwards speed. Instead, he angles his feet to the outside extremely early and gets beat up the middle without any resistance. He tries to time his step ups with the pass, but this is too late and it's off to the races. Sometimes he lets his man pass him, and then to recover he reaches in and gets burned, or he overskates the player leaving space behind him. He does this off puck too, throwing himself at this player who simply skates around him. Never do this. His pivots are at least part of the issue, he opens up his hips which is good, but then straightens and drops his leg onto the ice instead of driving off that rear leg. He takes poor routes to close out along the boards. This guy did to Edvinson what Edvinson does to other people. He needs to angle from down and up instead of up and down, which would drive play away from his net. 
This ties into issues with defending the cycle in general. With Edmondson's hips higher than his opponents and locked on his inside edges, he's not going to win a battle of mobility or run this guy into the boards. Notice his top hand, it's on the attacker's back. He should use it to wrap up the attacker and then trap their feet with his own. He understands body positioning, but again, he's beat because he doesn't trap their feet. He already has this solution in his game, he just doesn't do it regularly for whatever reason. In a way, Edvinson's development plan is basically the opposite of Sider's. Sider's development was all about puck skills, awareness of space and options, and the confidence to make plays. Edvinson has what Sider didn't, but he lacks Sider's details and pace. While they're interlocking puzzle pieces, they're also mere images of each other. Sider improved through experimentation in a game setting, learning what worked, what didn't. That process took Sider from a surprise pick to one of the best bets of recent drafts. For Edmondson, that process continues, as the eternity of time I spent on his paw suggests. Still, he's proven how to plug holes in his game, and mistakes never deter him from making plays the next shift. With Sider and Raymond, the future has already arrived for the Red Wings, but with improvement expected and Simone Edmondson still on the way, it's more of a sample of what's yet to come. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. For the full breakdown and plenty more hockey analysis news and information, head to eprinkside.com.